Welcome back, everyone, to the November 2020 1v10K tournament. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are going to be moving on to round three. Took a little while. It turns out I didn't actually realize that the match I was looking at was not the final match in round two. Yeah. Probably would realize that when you're watching on the VODs, but yeah, I wasn't really looking at that. So, we have round three. Is right versus Yogg-Sothoth. They are currently banning the maps. Uh, hey. Uh, wait. I forgot kind of loud. I can read Cyrillic, but not that fast. Uh. Oh, let's explain the rules. All right. So yeah, we're just working on getting the last ban in, and that will or the maps sorted out. So yeah, we are going to be getting into Yogg-Sothoth and Izzeride. Now, map three is going to around three. Anvil with Jurassic Sands or Prestige. I have not actually seen Jurassic Sands yet. I have seen Anvilwood and Prestige on stream, although I would like to see Anvilwood again with people with more experience. Prestige was yeah, it was, it was, okay, maybe it's probably better than it looks. It was just the last time I saw it played, it was like, I think it was Golda and Dregs, and Golda just took full advantage of the fact that the map is basically Spider Heaven. So, with that, we are going on to Anvilwood. Yeah, it looks like Galaxoth has the same opinion as on Prestige. So we are going on to Anvilwood, and that is going to be, that is going to be that. Anvilwood is our, hey, I got what I wanted. Hooray, Anvilwood with experienced players. Good to see how it goes. That'll be cool. Man, I'm pretty happy to see this because Anvilwood is one of those maps that I think takes a little bit of getting used to just because it is such a reclaim heavy map. The fact that it is so reclaim heavy really doesn't help as far as figuring out what kind of how it plays. Because it's otherwise a pretty famine map. And we use Red going for Hovercraft. Yogg-Sothoth going for something. Yogg going for Amphbot. Amphbot and Hovercraft on a map with basically no water, or at least no accessible water. Alright, well, Izzerod going for the hovers. Going for early dagger. Actually, very early quill, to be honest. Yaw going for extremely early conch. Which makes sense. I mean, this map, again, it has all of the reclaim. All of the reclaim. Everywhere. So, you're... You're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna get your constructors out to get that reclaim. Or use the commander. Using the commander looks like it'll be Yogg-Sothoth's strategy. Is right on the other hand. Actually not really going for that rapidly. Neither player all that keen on the reclaim. I wonder if there's something that I missed in terms of the overall value of that reclaim. I mean a thing to point out is that. This reclaim is right in the middle of the map, so it's pretty easy to intercept builders that are trying to take that reclaim. So taking it early is a bit of a risk. Unlike, say, Fields of Isis, where... Not Fields of Isis. Actually, yes, Fields of Isis. Unlike, say, Fields of Isis, where it's right in your main base. Or Eye of Horus, which is the actual map I was thinking of. Although Eye of Horus doesn't... No, not Eye of Horus. No, shoot. Eye of Horus doesn't... Gekko Isle! That's what I was thinking of. Gekko Isle is the map I was actually thinking of. 
which does have a lot of reclaim, and it is fairly safe to grab. Whereas this is a bunch of reclaim that is semi-safe to grab, but not the safest to grab. Like you throw out a couple constructors out there, and your opponent can send in a raider or two and just wipe them out. So with that, we have a switch over to Bolas, which makes sense. I mean, Bolas, that is basically, as of now, the main raider unit for Hovercraft, because daggers, unless you're in a position where you have half a dozen daggers and can just wipe out anything in one shot, daggers essentially are a scouting unit, and not much else. Like, they can't easily just go up against any army, or even any, like, raidable position. They really depend on their numbers. Whereas bolas, bolas just work on their own. Like, they scale well, but they don't have that threshold scaling that daggers have. So anyway, bolas coming in here. And doing their job of chasing the ducks away from the commander, so the commander can continue to reclaim in peace. Yogstoth getting a bunch of that early reclaim. Actually, Yogstoth is accessing... Unfortunately, due to lack of energy, but that has been remedied, at least for the time being. Wind generator power isn't great. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Still, they were character coming in, burning up a bunch of that excess metal. Same time, is a ride a little behind on production? They have plenty of metal, plenty of energy. They're just setting up their economy as strong as possible. But not a whole lot of actual production power in their main base. Ooh, he's a rights commander coming in with their little drones. Not managing to do all that much, but I guess exposing the archers existing. Bulls versus duck. Not great for the duck, but again, bulls are like three times the cost of ducks. Or two and a half times the cost of ducks. So a little iffy, but again, Yogg's switching over to boys. Kind of an even matchup against bulls. Both sides just end up being slowed down and not actually able to do much because everything's got slow projectiles. And there you go. Boy coming in here. Oh, not now. And with that, we have more boys. All the boys. Actually, Yasoth Commander coming forward. Ooh, going for the contested reclaim. Or the middle reclaim field. Which would be contested. Yes. So with that, boys coming in here. Oh, sorry. Bull is rather coming here over the north. Arch able to defend, help get rid of some of the bulls of the Lotus. Bit risky. Able to at least kill off two of the bulls. That's very well costed. Honestly, the value of that. On top of the fact that that reclaim field is more or less Yogg-Sadoth's territory. Israel just gave Yogg-Sadoth a nice little gift. Now, at the same time, Yogg-Sadoth is expanding pretty quickly around the more contested areas in the map and reclaiming a lot of this contested reclaim. Still a little bit more in Yogg's favor right now. Yogg's not the caretaker there. Unfortunately, wind has gone down and Izurai just has more wind generators. Honestly, why has Yogg's had not built solar plants? I don't know. Yogg's kind of been focusing on their energy economy only in as much as they need it when the wind is good. Which, granted, it will become good right now. It's picking back up. But yeah, Yogg is playing the energy game very close to the line. With they're finally building a few more power plants, but again, it's just, why not build some solars? Especially on the low ground where it's vulnerable. They can come in and your opponents can take out the wind plants. Uh, whatever. Boys having to contest with scalpels, which is not going to work out. For, the scalpels will win. Absolutely, the scalpels will win. Boys simply do not have the range or the speed to deal with that. So, no, that is that. Is that. Now, with Yogg-Sath... Okay, they got the Geoplant, at least. So, sure, they only had wind generators so far, but now with the Geoplant switch, I kind of have to eat my words. They are... They are getting solid energy. Same time, Izaride looking more to try to find ways of raiding, while Yogg-Sadoth able to defend effectively enough. They have their energy infrastructure in place. 
could use another caretaker or two. That is the one thing. And I don't mean on reclaim. I mean, it's good to have it on reclaim, but yeah, we already see there is a conch going back to the main base to help build out this grizzly. At the same time, also an archer coming around the back to get rid of a quill. Nicely done. There is nothing else around here. This entire... Okay, it's three metal per second, so I guess it's not a huge deal, but still. Gets rid of a quill that could rebuild that. Or build up energy to it and overdrive it to maybe two metal per second each. Yeah, like I said, this is a lot of very low value mexes. So I don't expect a l much overdrive to... I don't expect overdrive to have much of an effect, to be honest. But I guess... You know, it's still metal. And now it's scrap metal. So at this point, Izzeride has taken over... Sorry, Eoxoth has taken over far more than, than Izzeride. Izzeride, I think they have a stronger army. I'm curious. I think their army is... Oh yeah, their army is twice as... Well, has twice the cost value of Eoxoth, but largely because Eoxoth just building that Grizzly... Grizzly is up, and it is... Well, it's up. Army value hasn't... The army value graph hasn't quite tracked that. There we go. There, it's updated. Still 500 metal behind, but... Not terrible. Now, of course, the question is how well the Grizzly can actually make cost. We have the Lance here already that's going to operate as a bit of a counter... But then again, Grizzly is basically two amps on legs. Or sorry, two lances on legs. <laughs> two two arbitrary amp bots. No, it's two lances on legs in terms of the actual damage and the beam and everything. Oof. That is... That is a Grizzly! That is a push! That is Israel being pushed away, although the bull is coming around the side. Trying to at least do some counter raiding. The archer not able to get much farther thanks to a lotus. But the center of the map remains pretty firmly in Yogstoth's hands. Except for this one. No, the one quill here. Con trying to get rid of it. Ooh. Constructor fight went out at 15 to 5. That is not going to work. Or 15 build power to 5. Forced to get out of there, but that is... That is the southeast, or the eastern reclaim field. Pretty much taken over by Yogg-Soth. Yogg soth already took the northern reclaim field. And the southwest field is the only one that's really in contention. Which appears to be pretty well Izzerite. So they basically managed to grab it over time. Ooh, at the same time, Izzerite's commander upgraded quite heavily. Mostly just for the sake of upgrading. Actually, not really doing much else. They have, yeah, rocket launch, a couple of rocket launchers, extra range, radar. Not a whole lot of modules, though. Just going for the extra HP. Or is that an NG commander? No, no, it's not. Bill of Power is still 10. It's a Guardian commander. What am I saying? It's got, it's got drones. Of course it's a Guardian commander. I know this. I know game. Game I know. Yogg-Soth also knows game, and actually has built another Caretaker up in their main base, getting another Grizzly up as well. Okay, I really kind of wish Yogg-Soth would set up a factory plate to have, like, some ducks coming alongside this, or other support units, because, I mean, the Grizzlies are all well and good, but all of the support units are dead. Yogg-Soth has nothing but the Grizzly and a bunch of workers. Like, the Constructors are the only other unit type in play. This is the use case for the plate. When you want to have support units being built while you're setting up your main unit. I'm honestly a little surprised we aren't seeing... I'm really surprised we aren't seeing a lot of plates. I mean, granted, they're still kind of new, and as I said before, it's... I know it sounds weird, but oftentimes it takes about a year or so before things really get used. Ooh, Yoxoth's commander. Are they gonna... Ooh. It's It's close. That Lance wants them dead. Yeah, the Oxus commander goes down. He's a ride. Nice little air switch coming in here. 
Taking out the commander, taking out a few metal extractors, or not metal extractors, taking out some stardusts too. Losing most of their ravens in the process, though. But it's probably worth it. I mean, losing the commander, that was that was pretty big. Yogstoth, they hadn't invested a whole lot into the commander, but the commander was still their main frontline defense. Granted, they've gotten some ducks up, and the grizzlies are... Grizzlies exist. Again, this is why you want support units for the grizzlies, because it's pretty easy to take them out with light units. I do not understand why Yogstoth is not building a plate. But again, if, if they're rusty, then yeah. This is why I say it takes about a year or so before new features really start getting used. Just because there's a lot of players that get rusty and play, go back in old habits and don't think about, oh yeah, right, I can build a secondary factory plate thing and that works. However, Yogstoth is still doing well on territory. Like, they lost one Grizzly, but the second Grizzly is still able to come in, deal a fair bit of damage. It's... yeah, it's actually doing fine. Despite losing their commander, despite losing a Grizzly, and despite not having a lot of support units, Yogstoth has just been able to out-econ Izzeride, and at this point, Izzeride still has a stronger army by value. Mostly in Lances, which are still dealing with the, with the Grizzlies, but the territory controls Yogstoths. And now with Yogstoth going around the side with the Ducks, that could be game. Izzeride, they have radar on the side at all? Well, they do now. They can see it. It might be a little bit late, however. Ducks coming in one at a time, and at the same time, Yogstoth going in from the front as they go in from the backyard. Ravens coming around the back, try to get rid of some of the Ducks. Fortunately for Izzeride, they did set up a Stardust. Unfortunately, they are pretty well contained on all sides. Like, Izzeride's commander is their main asset right now. I mean, yeah, the bolas and scalpels and such, but so far those actually haven't done much. We haven't even seen Bulkhead yet. Speaking of this, we do have the Bulkhead. I don't think this that would be the wisest unit at this point. Well, 230 for... I don't know. I guess maybe as a way of holding out the bullets. I don't. I don't think Bulkhead would necessarily be the best option in this matchup. There's too much. There's too much movement. I think Bulkhead doesn't work in hover, or versus hover. But I mean, maybe if Yogstad's trying to do a hard push setup, they could, you know, leapfrog siege tanks effectively. Let's drop the Bulkhead down and just, you know. Set it up as they go. The Grizzlies really aren't working. I mean, Izzeride now turning this around. There we go. Izzeride with two lances gets rid of the Grizzly. No further Grizzlies coming in. Gotta say, this is why you build a plate so you can have the Grizzly kind of just building up alongside while you have your support units get up. Because now, I mean, Yogsoth can't go for another Grizzly if they wanted to. But they also are a little bit limited because now it's like, you know, you're dealing with. Units pouring out one at a time, as opposed to two or three at a time. But yeah, with that Grizzly down, there is not much left for Yogg'Sathoth. Izzerite's commander is still up. Now it's actually coming forward and doing significant damage. Also showing off a neat little trick about the Guardian commander, which is that it baits razors. It's very easy to clear them out as a result. With that, Izzeride just got this. I mean, they, there's... Yogstoth, do they have any tricks up their sleeve? Nope. Mass Boy, that's not a trick. That is a straightforward strategy. Actually, you know what? Maybe Bulkhead would be useful. Let's double check. What's Bulkhead's damage? Uh, okay, 87 per second. No. I'm saying against the commander, it might be useful, but boys deal more damage per second. Well, okay, a little bit less, but also it's slow. Although boys are boys are much weaker. Oh, that's there, there it is. Yogstoth self self dethroned Man! I mean Yogstoth did say it's the first tournament in three years, but yeah, that was I mean that was interesting. That was definitely a showcase of how Amphbot played three years ago. But yeah, there's there's tools now that they have that they don't didn't have before. They have they can build support units alongside the Grizzly and for cheap. And Again, I don't think the bulkhead is a great choice in this matchup. There's too much stuff moving around. It's still a new tool. 
Although I did like the archer. The archer is also kind of a newish tool in the way it's used. I think if there were more archers used, this would have gone differently. I think the ducks didn't really work. I think archers would have been a better option. But archers are also kind of the meme unit right now. So they could just be all... That could be affecting my thinking on that matter. Anyhow, that is not the last match for the round. Definitely up there. But let's see what else we've got. We have Thirks and Bergelon, Did Rocket and Terex, Terexac, 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 yeah. Dregs and Kshatria, which is still going on. Oh, that can be interesting. Although I've already done Dregs. I kind of want to show off each player if I can. I won't be able to, but as much as I can. Malaric and Ted McFred, another one which I... Well, where is that? Unfortunately, it's kind of hard to find these sometimes. Oh, okay, that's over. Is there anything else going on? Well, Dregs and Kshatra is happening. Wait, is it happening? I'm not sure. Sorry, I'm going to have to double check what's actually happening in terms of matches. Oh no, that one's over. I think we might be moving on to round four already. Yeah, Mogus Patch on FFC is done. Yeah, it looks like we're just waiting on the last... Oh no, there's still a couple that are running. Hmm. Malric and Ted... Oh man, how is this going on for so long? I'm vaguely curious. Alright, well, I guess we might as well rejoin and see what's going on here. <laughs> Apologies to Tim McFred. But, I mean, if they're lasting for 20 minutes, there may be something good going on. Hmm. Alright. Let's see what's happening. Oh, this is this round three. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's see what's going on here. Now going for hovers. Ted McFred going for rovers. Very quick expansion over the sides. Although Malric a little bit faster on the uptake with the expansion. But actually getting contained pretty quickly. Ted McFred with a upgrade commander just totally pushing that troll comm. Malric consistently attempting to break the commander. Goes around the back. It's very little done. I mean, some damage here and there. Oh, never mind. The daggers just escaped. Some damage here and there. Doing something. But man, Malric is actually having a bit of a hard time holding on. They did manage to get a beachhead over the south side of the map, opening things up a bit. And breaking Ted McFred's hold. Ted McFred, however, is entirely under commander. The commander falling back, getting caught out by the scalpels. Takes out the scalpels, gets taken out themselves, though, and that might end up being game. Ted McFred, however, able to rebuild the defensive force. Looking to be a little underpowered, though. The Ravager's coming in, taking out a bunch of units. Nimbus is able to hold on, but still, Ted McFred holding on ish. Relying entirely on Reclaim to actually get back in this match. Malak, on the other hand, with a strong static economy. Going for a proxy Ampot Factory. Looks like it's going to be proxy Grizzly. And that will likely be what ends out this game. Though it gets spotted out completely. The commander gets forced to retreat. Character gets thrown in instead. The Ravager's... Ravager wave has been pushed back. Having Fred losing their forward position. I was blocking out the northern lane on this map. Actually losing the beach of the head over in the north as well. Gotta have Ted McFred credit. They really were spreading themselves out quite a lot to take out as much of the economy as they could. More Ravagers coming in over to the south side of the map, and it looks like they are pretty well equipped to deal with this. I mean, get rid of at least some of this. Oh, but they're gonna go for the Grizzly, not for the Factory. This is a position where the Factory is actually much easier to kill. 
Unfortunately, going for the commander instead. Oh, got the caretaker. It's one down. If the factory goes down, the factory... Like, this is the one time I will say, go for the factory. I rarely do, but it's got 600 HP. Go for... Oh, then what if the factory? That would have been it. That would have been it. Because the factory has 600 HP. The Grizzly is almost done. It would have been completely wiped out otherwise. Ted McFred has just thrown the game. I mean, granted, Ted McFred is doing remarkably well for their rating. But it's also... They are... Yeah, they are going to go down. This Grizzly is now unstoppable. Ted McFred does not have the resources to stop it. The only chance they had was to kill the factory. And the factory is being repaired, too. So that chance is gone as well. It's an unfortunate thing, but it's one of those decisions that you kind of have to make really on the fly because it's not the typical decision. Normally, normally you go for the caretakers or try to kill the unit being constructed, but Grizzlies have twice the HP of a factory, and the factory being as low HP as it was, you know, if it went down, the Grizzly was done. And if that had happened, Ted McFred could have held on a little longer, possibly maybe pushed it back because that was a lot. At that point, it's like three, 400,000 metal thrown into that Grizzly. Sorry, 1,500 ish metal thrown into that grizzly. That would have been. That would have been significant. I don't know if that would have been enough, but at that point, Ted McCred had held on quite a lot for. Well, through quite a bit, honestly. And Malarik would have been investing most of the resources into that grizzly. Or, not most, I mean 20 metal per second, but still. Or 30 metal per second. But still, that, that would have been. You know, 1,500 metal worth of units that would not have existed. But, so it goes. Ted McFred did not punish Malric's hubris, and that is Malric taking the win. So I think with that, we are... Yes, we are now done round three, and moving on to round four.